A hundred miles west of London in the cathedral city of Gloucester lives a young man whose life is about to change. David Keith, 27, works as a senior radiographer at the Gloucester Royal Hospital, helping doctors save lives. I try and get the best picture I can, because um, obviously I'm working with radiation, um, and no amount of radiation is good radiation. Tomorrow morning, David will be off to London. He'll swap x-rays for spotlights, his lead apron for blue jeans, and his bedside manner for flirtation. David's going to try to pass himself off as a fashion photographer. He'll be spending the next 28 days learning the tricks of the trade from top lensman Stuart Weston. I'd like the guy to be really excited about it, have lots of energy. I'd like him to be imaginative. I'd like him to be respectful and be really turned on about the idea of taking a beautiful image. And pop your chin just on the top there. Excellent. You comfortable there? Yes. Can a dedicated NHS healthcare worker exchange underfunding for extravagance, biology for glamour, and make the jump from provincial Gloucester to the glitter of the London fashion scene? Four weeks from now, David will be up against three professional photographers shooting top models in a competition judged by experts from the fashion world. Will they know he's a faker? I'm very nervous. I'll be glad um, when I'm actually in the thick of it. Do you think you'll stand the pace? Well, I think it'll be tough. I think I'm gonna, uh, there's going to be times where I'm going to just want to just curl up and die somewhere in the corner. <laughs> Right, just wanted to uh, say a couple of words. Um, obviously, we're here today to, to say goodbye to David, who's, who's leaving for a little while. Um, people leave for all sorts of reasons. Sometimes it's having a baby. Uh, <laughs> I thought you know, had to have a model. So uh, we wish you a enormous success. David will be leaving his three-bedroom, semi-detached Gloucester home and all his creature comforts. He'll be saying goodbye to his girlfriend, physiotherapist Vicky. I prefer to test Dave and all his women. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I was worried because he's going to be with all the fashion models and all the rest of it, but I trust him. Just be When David arrives at Paddington Station, mentor Stuart Weston is busy on a fashion shoot on the other side of town. So he's sent along his trusted assistant, Mr. V. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> Hi, mate. You must be V. Yeah, how you doing? You all right? Hey, pleased to meet you. Apart from my bag just breaking. So, V, your real name or V? No, my, sure. my real name's Vahakan. Vahakan. Yeah, it means God of the Sun. Excellent. Uh, v has been working with Stuart for six years now, so he knows what David's letting himself in for. <laughs> Stu. Stu, let me tell you about Stu. Go on, then. Right. I'm dying to know. Is um, he, like, really emotional? Is he, like, or is he, like, calm and collected and... Oh, he's calm and stuff. It depends, it depends. Don't piss him off. <laughs> is he got like, a <laughs> temper, then? Or... No. <laughs> but, you know... The stuff he does is, it's kind of Renaissance influenced. What else? So, What's that mean? <laughs> Renaissance. Um, paintings like uh, Michelangelo. Right. Okay. That kind of that kind of you know look where it's very um, like some flowers um, and all that sort of stuff. No, no. no. Um, like That's Leonardo da Vinci. Do. No, sunflowers is Van Gogh. Oh, OK, see, see? Uh, you got, are you getting worried yet? But it's, uh, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> for the next month, David's going to be living in the kind of place that any up-and-coming photographer would kill for, a live workspace in a converted shoe factory in Hackney. It's pretty block. Yeah, this is proper class, mate. <laughs> it looks unfinished. <laughs> supposed to look unfinished, for God's sake. <laughs> Right, Where this is gone? your room, and I hope you're very comfortable in here. OK. It's got a floodlight. It's got all mod cons, man. Electricity. Light here for you. There you go. <laughs> Windows. 
And a radio, yeah? Clothes roll? Uh, it doesn't have any curtains. It's an urban oh. chic. And it's wicked. <laughs> Like David, Stuart Weston came to the fashion scene from a very different background. He was once an engineer at British Aerospace. Now he is much sought after for his moody, cutting-edge images, and his pictures have appeared in all the international magazines, Harper and Queen, Elle, GQ, Cosmo and Vogue. I've got to find a way of making this guy look as if he really knows what he's doing, and I've only got 28 days to do it. That's the challenge. It's an enormous challenge for him. Uh, it's an enormous challenge for me. You must be David. Hi. Nice David, to nice to meet you. How are you? I'm yeah. good. Yes. Yeah, Thank I'm you. fine, thanks. I'm very well. Yeah. Please sit down. I know nothing. Nothing. Oh. Nothing at all, no. No, I'm not. Where do you want to start? Right, I'm 27 years of age. Yeah. Um, I'm a radiographer working in a radiographer. radiographer. Ah, okay, that kind of makes sense now. Yeah, there's a little, there's a link there. You, okay, <laughs> all right, you take images of people. Of yeah. people, yeah, yeah. of bones, from the inside. bones yeah. from the inside. What we're going to do over the next 28 days, we we'll turn it on its head and we're going to teach you how to take pictures from the outside. First night in um, my prison cell, by the looks of it. Um, not in the sense that I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything, but in the sense that the surroundings, that's the only thing I can equate it to. Very short notice, he's, he's been, you know, he's been beamed from one planet to another and, and obviously he's really, he's really unsettled and he's a bit nervous and he's a bit startled. It's like someone's shipwrecked me. <laughs> it's like someone's put me in a little place and took away all my creature comforts. Um, I wasn't expecting that. And it's just amazing how a big city, you can feel so alone. It's day one of David's new life as a hip, young, wannabe fashion photographer. I've got a big day ahead. I'm going to spend a lot of someone else's money on all the camera kit I need for the next month to turn me into a top photographer. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I need to look my best to be able to do that. Um, but I think as far as V and um, Stuart are concerned, um, I should be starting to grow some sort of facial expression here. But um, yeah, but I don't feel comfortable doing it right yet. That's it. Cool. David has never owned a camera before. Even when he goes on holiday, he gets copies of snaps taken by his friends. It's off to King's Cross in Stuart's beloved Mercedes to London's largest photographic dealers to get David tooled up with professional gear. If he's to fake it successfully, he'll have to learn his way around filters and focal lengths, formats and f-stops. He'll need to know a Nikon from a Pentax, a Leica from a Linhof and a Mamiya from a Hasselblad. It's a bit of a beast, this one. That's why you look through there. OK. Interchangeable film bags. One so twenty film bags. Go on there. Yeah, we can pop a lens on there. Right. <laughs> wow, that's massive. Yeah, it's, it's a monster, isn't it? <laughs> Spid your camera. Right. <laughs> no, yeah. no, not a normal uh, hold it in your hand, take a picture camera at it, all. It is quite bulky, <laughs> yeah. but don't be intimidated by it. It's just a piece of kit, right? It's doing a job. It's a box with a hole in it. Yeah? Stick a lens on it. Do you fall in love with your kit? Do you care for it like it's your... No. What's that? That's not the lens. Ah. No, that's just a filter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I looked that would be an there. interesting yeah, looking lens, wouldn't it? Was on that, didn't yeah, I? okay, yeah. We've got our work cut out, haven't we? <laughs> One times money frotto medium, is that right? Now, this is your man frotto. It's your tripod. Quad, quadri. Quadri. Photography is loaded with technical jargon, and David's going to have to learn it and use it if he's to talk the talk. But it won't be easy. He's dyslexic. Mintel or flash meter? Min, min How do you pronounce it? Minolta. Minolta, okay. Flash meter. One times. Yeah. Okay, I've got Minolta 5 here. Snail, diamond, rabbit. Slow, medium, fast. David's gonna have to absorb the technical stuff just as fast as V can cram it in. Top of light. Excellent. Cool. Right, let's check this light. Cable. 
If I said to you, pop the flash, make sure no one's looking at him. Fashion. Girls wearing clothes you wouldn't be seen dead in. It's all about vision and vibe, energy and edge, atmosphere and attitude, flair and feel. David must learn how to create and capture these things, but can they be taught? Went to the fashion show. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Lived up to my expectations and more. People that were there, gorgeous people, dressed in wacky, sh wacky shit. The whole atmosphere was just wow, just breathtaking. Right, David, leave, leave that alone, mate. I've got, I've got something else for you to do. Right, see that bag there? Yeah. Right. Okay, listen, th this goes inside that bag. All right, now that. Okay? okay. Just stuff it in there. All right, mate. Just, just do it a favor. Next day that. and back to photography lessons. It's time to find out if David can pass the reflector test. Hey, come on, David, stop messing about now. Come on. Oh, David, I've got something else for you to do when you finish that. Come on. Just do it. You need to. Oh, for fuck's sake, David. Right? That's it. <laughs> 21 seconds to flow. I got 21 seconds to go. Because okay. if you like me, let me know. Let me be in the studio. I got 21 seconds before I got to go. Did you see me on the video? Oh, no. Did you see me on the video? Oh, no. So if you like me, let me know. Let me be in the studio. I got 21 seconds before I got to go. Next, lighting. Key light, side light, back light, cross light, rim light, fill. Exposure and contrast. Mood and how to create. Yeah? Yeah. Right, so where about... Stuart's training plan means long, hard sessions with V before David gets his hands on the camera for the first okay, time. We've got 16, 6, uh, 1, 2, 5, and 100. It's quite exciting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching the baby walk. <laughs> first picture. Yeah, it's exciting. I don't want to do it. I've been waiting all day to do it. Oh, I'm excited for you. <laughs> you don't want to get sunburnt, man. There's a shot. Come on. You're missing the shot. You're missing the shot. You're missing the shot. <laughs> Just press, press the button. Buddy. Okay, V, fill it, mate. If you, can, if, you can, if you can make something real lax that much, then, okay, it was a moment. Excellent. Drum roll, please. Okay. That's, right. That's not bad, is it? Yeah. Well done. That's not yeah. bad. No, it's a, no, it's a very good beginning. It's a good beginning. <laughs> It's day five of David Keith's transformation into a fashion photographer. It's David's first time on set and the first chance to see his mentor, Stuart, in action. Stuart is using David's apartment to shoot a magazine story, but things start badly when David won't let the model use his bedroom to change in. This girl, she's just 18. She's come to the studio this morning. It hasn't got a changing room facility. And so it was suggested, well, she uses the bedroom, naturally. There's a room, there's privacy there. The girl, you know, this young woman needs privacy. And he was, oh, no, she can't use my room. No, I'm sorry, that's my room. Well, I'm sorry, David, it's not your room. You know, your room's back in Gloucester somewhere, mate. You know, tune in. Sorry, sorry, mate. No, it's all right. Just well, like... No, I would, personally, I would. I would like to. Well, if, if, if that's the way you feel about it, then... <laughs> No fashion photographer works alone, and Stuart has put together a top team to train David. Hair, Sally, makeup, Yvette, and stylist, Claire. I've got to try and be Stuart, be better than Stuart, if that's possible. Be Stuart. Hang on a minute, better than Stuart. Do you want, you, you want, to, you want to do well at this or not? I want to do better than well. <laughs> I'm going to pick you out if you don't feel comfortable in yourself. So but you've got to look like a photographer. What's a photographer look like? Not, I, not, I've not just like... seen Stuart. Um, 
So what's wrong with the way I look? How can I not be a photographer here and now? Photographer, you've got to look a bit more... generally look fashionable. fashionable. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, your trousers, and they're really nice, but they're very thin, and there's no sort of, um... There's no atmosphere going on with them. We're he has me a bit baggy. There's no atmosphere in your trousers. <laughs> yeah. I look down, and he's wearing Tigger socks. Yeah. <laughs> tigger socks, man. Yeah. I love Tigger socks. What else have you got in your sock wardrobe? Love Come on. Oh, they got, got the bunny ones and ties. I've got matching boxer shorts. I do, actually. No! I've got matching boxer shorts. No! Matching boxer shorts. It can't just be a photographer, because... He doesn't know anything about the equipment or how to handle it or how to command a shoot yet. You know, there's, there's, a, whole, there's a whole politics as well of, of being in a studio and bringing all these people together and all these talents and briefing them and, you know, getting everybody excited and enthusiastic about what you're doing and people believing in you as well. You know, they have to believe in you. So it, it's good for him to observe and, and take all this in. Guys, don't walk around when I'm shooting the floor to the right room. Thanks. Okay, go. About now. Okay, no blinking. Now. Cool. Let's have a look at those. That's the <coughs> number one on the mic. Ask questions later. That's right, shoot first. Okay. I'd sooner he just stayed back a little bit. When everybody's doing anything, of course, like they're quite passionate about it, you get in a bit of a zone, you see. And I might just be getting this, just getting that shot when he asks me something. And, uh, and he's going to distract me. I'll just send my head, my head off somewhere where it shouldn't be. Give me a close of shape again. A little bit cheeky with the boobs, yeah. But I was always curious as to what, 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 what someone's breast would be called, but uh, Stuart calls it a boob, um, boobs hanging out. Um, it didn't faze me at all, actually. And, and I thought initially maybe naked girls would be a distraction, but no, nah, I don't think they're not going to be at all. Stuart has spent years developing a unique photographic style, but David has less than four weeks to find his. Right now, he's not into Stuart's Renaissance vibe and is keen to go his own way. I'm happy with that. Yeah. He likes this one. What do you, what do you like about it? Do you... The face. What, like what, about, what about the picture? What can you tell me about it? Well, she's wearing a Mac, the, the colour's up, and um, she's looking back thinking, I'm trying to picture her in the scene, and mm. that's why I like it. I'm going to try to see that little cheekiness. That's cool. That's, that's, a, that's the beginning of a style, then, definitely. That's what he relates to the most. Yeah. Tomorrow, David will have the chance to find his style when he takes charge of his first photo shoot. This morning it's my first shoot, um, and I'm very tired. I um, didn't sleep well last night. Lots of things going on in my head. Um, and last night was as well. Before I went to bed, um, I had lots of... I was getting very scared. Um, I wasn't sure how I wanted to play today, didn't have any images in my head, and it started to really frighten me. An energy buzz this morning. On the advice of Stuart, David agrees to follow a simple brief, to shoot strong images of the model against a clean white background. All right, 11, 5, 11, and 5. 11. 11. Okay. Well, happy, happy moments. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. <laughs> we, that's it, man. Well, no, that's it, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. When you just relax, you look gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Just chill. <laughs> We think the first picture is a bit of a mistake. Well, not a mistake. It was it's lucky. Great. It was lucky. It's, it's got, got a moment. moment. Yeah. It's fun. It's light. It's relaxed. Yeah. He just happened to. I think. I think. Sorry, Dave. I think he just happened to press the button at the right time, which which is one of those things with photography that if you're lucky enough all the time, you, you can get away with faking it. You can. If you're lucky. You can, but exactly. if you then try to make a story out of it and you can't quite get that moment back again, then you're screwed, which is kind of what's happening now a little bit. Yeah. David's also finding out how hard it is to sustain the happy vibe all day long. You remember when you were right up against the wall, yeah? yeah. To keep the team focused and energised and keep the model believing in him. I've got a 
fantastic team of people here. I've got some of the top people that you'll ever work with here, and, and we've got to trust them mm. um, between the both of us. I know it's really hard. You're, you're new as well from that point of view, but, <laughs> um, but I'm even newer as well. I've been yeah, I love the clothes. I love the makeup. There's nothing I don't like. It's just, you just, feel yeah, it's, just, I just it's, it, it's just limiting the amount of actually positions you it's can just, do sometimes, mm. and it's like, well, I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. He's being intimidated by the model. And he's not taking control of his set, really. And th that's down to inexperience. It's a big flash. No. V. Just have to push that arm up yeah, right yeah. now. Little telltale signs like that. I like giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> As planned, Stuart drops into the studio to check that his instructions are being followed. But they haven't. And by the time he arrives, David and the others are a bit nervous about how he'll react. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, yeah. How are you doing, guys? Hello. Right. Hello. I thought you'd still be shooting. You must be really quick. Yeah. yeah. Well, like a good day. Yeah. you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Think so? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> no, there's some good stuff here, but there's... It's not very clean. I would have liked to have seen that wall a bit wider, David. Remember, I spoke to you last night about it. Yeah, well, we talked about that this morning. We um, decided to go for a grey. We actually did that purposely, mate. You did, did you? Yeah, we did. Mm. So, to me, my bit dirty. You'll know when you see the film. It's too down, and I don't like the shadow across here. We spoke about it last night, I said, make that clean. That girl today looked like she might be delivering milk. I expect to see that girl looking really funky and quite raw at the edges, shot against a super, super clean white with quite hard modelling so I can see some features to give her an edge and shot really simply, and I expect to see lots of attitude from the model, and I don't see anything Nothing at all there. You listen, you're a nice guy, okay? Well, that's like somebody saying to me, it's a nice picture. Do you want me to say you're nice? David's nice? I don't want you to be nice, mate. I want you to toughen up a bit, yeah? And be really really strong about what it is you've got to do. Yeah, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, yeah? Okay. And look at the people you've got behind you. I'm so behind you. You know, we've got a, you know, the honeymoon's over now. Well, it wasn't really a honeymoon, was it? It was, it was a pretty awful one, actually. You know, the, the first few days were really tough, yeah? Today, today's just like the big one, okay? So, come on, you're going to get it right, mate. I'm 110% behind you, okay? Uh, I love video diary. Um, it's like... In the morning after my shoot, I didn't do my video diary. After Stu spoke to me after my shoot because he needed some beers, um, and a couple of beers, and he did lots and lots of beers, um, and there was no point in me doing a video diary by the time I got home at five o'clock in the morning. So I felt I let people down, especially myself and everyone else. I don't like doing that. He realised he can't just swan in and do it his own way and have his own style. It's like, you don't do that. It takes years to develop a, a style as a photographer. A lot, the criticism I got from everyone was fantastic. Just took me so much on board now that my next shoot will be, it'll be better. Senior radiographer David Keith now has less than two weeks to turn himself into a credible fashion photographer. Model Kate Orr has worked with all the top photographers. She's going to show David how to get what he wants from his subject. What have you been up to then? How's it all going? Um, yeah, it's, it's gone quite well, actually, yeah. apart from my pictures and... Yeah, pictures? <laughs> is he getting there? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I've got a few problems, though, and so I'm trying to... Go on, then, throw them at me. Well, my main one is communicating with someone such as yourself, a model. All right. I think that's, that's, that's my stumbling block I'm at the moment. It's OK, we're human beings, <laughs> right? We're not going to bite you. That's the main thing you've got to realise. And just centre this yep. way. Perfect. You OK there? Yeah, fine. So that's your spot, so to speak, but you Thank probably you. know that anyway. <laughs> right. no, don't, be, don't be afraid of saying things, so that's your spot. Bang. That's so, it, end it. Forget yeah. about it. Forget about it. That's all you need to say. 
don't apologise for everything you do either. Okay, just it's all my confidence again. Yeah, do just do it. Do the just actions, just do it. Yeah. Again, that's just a really nice set. And you moved your leg as well, didn't you? Only just slightly. Yeah, but like, it helps with shape, it. Yeah, it? that's it. And that's what you get from little movements. If you do big movements, you miss out on things as well. But you're already starting to give me the banter as you're talking, <laughs> which is good. Ah! 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 Try and change the pitch. Ah! There's more help, this time at RADA. David is going to have to dig deep into himself, searching for the confidence and charisma he'll need to fake it. Helping him is drama coach Dee Cannon. He's got a very tight body and he's done sports before and I don't think anybody's ever asked him to, to be zany or silly or, um, or open up or take poses like a model. Ciao. Au revoir. Dee thinks that role-play, wearing masks, may loosen David's inhibitions. She needs to teach him how to flirt. So what are you doing? What are you up to? Oh, a bit of this, a bit of that. Yeah. You look like you like a bit of that. Yeah, I do, with the right guy. Yeah. You've not seen the right guy recently? Oh, wow. Wow. David. Oh. 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 I don't know, it's very um, mm. daunting. Um, but it's like, when, it was a lot difficult when I was trying to be me in a new role. I couldn't do that, but when I was trying to be a mask, it was different. I, I was able to, once, I don't know, be able to get into it a little bit more. With input from Kate and Dee, and emulating Stuart's atmospheric, moody vibe, David starts taking good pictures. Right, well done. Thank you. As far as this programme's concerned, I'm just faking it. But as far as I'm concerned, and my whole head and everything that's going on around me, I'm becoming a photographer. It's my passion that I'm growing, and the passion is growing. I'm changing. There's a change going on inside me. Well, now he's feeling like a fashion photographer, David needs to look like one. Stylist Claire Gaynard has big plans. It's makeover day. I'm going to try and make him look a bit more rocking. Which is going to be a little bit tough, <laughs> only because uh, your body shape is quite awkward to work around, isn't it? Really, it's quite a challenge today. I think I'm to afraid. <laughs> David's feet are six and a half, which is really tiny. So I might have to get something a bit bigger and stuff them, just so he looks a bit more masculine. If he gets some jeans that are too big, like bigger on the waist, and they're worn a bit lower, so he's got a bit of a bag here. But then because his legs are short, we don't want him looking... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what am I putting on next, Claire? Body bag. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? I'm going to put a body bag on now. It's basically getting away from this sort of almost back-to-school haircut. It's very even, yeah. very solid. <laughs> and getting it looking like he hasn't really spent any yeah. time on it. Hello. Whoa. Damn, these are hanging Thank nicely, you. aren't they, mate? Go on, mate. You've got your calvins on. <laughs> Did you sort out socks? Not cartoon characters. <laughs> oh, you've got a belt on. Oh. Just. The belt was there. They'd be set up back right, here, I yeah. think. That's looking good, mate. That is looking yeah, good. Again, yeah. now, film a bit more. Yeah, just give us that boogie nights move again. A bit sharper. <laughs> yeah, excellent. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just make Got you some box today. Right. The makeover's a big success, even the Hoxton Finn hairdo. But there's no rest for the faker. Stuart's brought David some cover story homework. 
a crash course on the world's greatest fashion photographers, like Mario Testino and Corinne Day. There's an article about the, the influence of sort of early 70s pornography on today's mainstream fashion. And here's another good one with a very, very famous picture of, uh, of Kate with uh, no, no top on on the beach. It was like... That was probably, I think that was probably the picture that launched her career in a way. This one got a noticed enormously. Really lovely picture, she was so natural in it. With a few days to go before the big test, Stuart hopes to inspire David by arranging a shoot at an exotic location out of London. Stanway House in Gloucestershire is a favourite with the world's top photographers. And a bonus for David is that girlfriend Vicky is only a half hour's drive away. So it's a chance to see her again for the first time in three weeks. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can I see your cute ass on it? <laughs> That's no good. There's a bat here somewhere. <laughs> This is the place and the exact spot where Mario Testino shot British Vogue with Christy Turnington and the issue that you got really excited yeah. about. Yeah, so here's an opportunity for you to do a bit of a Mario. Well, <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually no. here's, here's an opportunity to, you to really try and fake it. All right. <laughs> When I saw him, I think I was, I was quite shocked in a way. It's sort of, um, it looks very different in a way. I'd say it looked more of a sort of scruff and everything, but I know it's the cool image. Just take that off just for a second. It was a bit odd as well, um, doing the shoot and then Vicky around and watching me tell these models how gorgeous they are and how sexy they look and how classy they look. Because that really frustrates me as well. I was like, why the hell do I have to tell this girl how good she looks, you know? She's a model for goodness sake. She should know how good she looks. She's getting paid to be here. No one tells us at work how good we're doing all the time and how fantastic we are. Uh, and we're saving lives, you know? When the hunt turns up outside the front door, David shows signs of reverting to type. Beneath the makeover, his loyalties seem to lie more with country folk than London fashionistas. I was a bit, a bit upset about the fact that there was a hunt going on, and I, um, I pretty enjoy the whole thing about a hunt. Um, and stuff, but my new friends from London were all mouthing off about how nasty and everything it was, and I was like, well, what do you know about a hunt? What do you know about a country life? Um, it's a whole totally different vibe, you know? Well, I thought that we were there to do a photographic shoot, and the next minute he's trotting around these bloody hunters with a plate full of sausage rolls. I thought the whole thing was bizarre and quite distasteful, actually. What sausage rolls, anyone? Yes. Personally, I'm really against it. And I think the majority of people there were really against it. And he knew that. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. On top of everything else, Stuart's worried that David is still making elementary errors. 8-6. Eight, six. Eight, six. You just shot that at 22, so you've not got any. Right, so we start again. <sighs> The big test is only days away, and basic mistakes with exposure and camera shake could ruin the whole thing. I know the picture's good. What you don't know is whether or not that should speed up. Or the other should speed work, do you? Well, that was the same back there, but you were happy. You were saying go to go to film back there for the new previous one. Well, what, you didn't say that, did you? That's why. I'm... Yeah? Does that well, make sense? Just, what are you arguing about? Why no, I'm just, not arguing. No, 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 why are you just taking two Polaroids at different shutter speeds? Check the line. Why, why have you taken two at different shutter speeds? Because it's ambient and more ambient to fill it in. Yeah. The background in better. Right, so when you, you can make a decision when you see these, can't you, which shutter speed was right? No, but what I was saying is you were saying exactly the same just there, back there, without saying that we needed to see it. And that's what I was interpreting. What on earth are you going on about? <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> matter. Look at these bloody Polaroids. That's what I wanted to do, but... Right. Which one's right? What was your shoot? So that was 30. No, it was, it was 15th. It was in half a second. Okay, that's when you shoot at then. 
Okay. Right. That's why you did this. Okay, let's go. Oh, you're doing it. You're shooting and going back, shooting back. Yeah, you're on a long shot of okay, yeah. Shoot, then roll. Just okay. give yourself a little Get bit of time. I'm worried that the shutter's still open while you've already started winding, because you're almost doing the two simultaneously. If you do that, what's happening is you're moving the camera whilst the shutter's still open. And I, and I keep seeing this movement of the camera. Squeeze it gently, roll. Take your time. Yeah. Right. That's it, you gave it time then. Yeah. So it had to be right it. How did you feel today? Yeah, did you feel very excited. You seemed a lot more confident today. I'm very yeah. excited. Yeah. Apart from running with you a minute ago. Yeah, but you know what? It's like I'm, no, you could, you did I'm, put, I'm, I'm putting that much time and energy and everything into helping you. And then I've just pointed something out and you start arguing with no, me. No, I wasn't arguing. I was trying to say it's, I misinterpreted David, what you what said to me. What I expected you to do was just go, right, there's a reason why this guy's asked me to do something. Because there is. I'm not doing it to make you look silly, man. Oh, no, no. There's a reason why you need to see the Polaroid, so you could make a decision. So I'm just saying, just be that little bit more explicit with me, so I can know that's what I wasn't trying to... forward than that, David. You're arguing again. <laughs> now, no, I'm stop asking. It. I'm asking. I'm serious now. Don't argue with me, please. I'm trying to help you. I'm putting 150% of myself into you. you. All right, so if I just ask you to look at the Polaroid, just look at it. But you didn't, that's what I'm saying. You just said put film back on. I'll tell you That's what. going to be a good picture. Let's just play back this scene, go for a pint, and you're going to be buying. All right? <laughs> All right. Anyway, come on. He started giving me this whole ego trip about he's giving it 150% to this. And I was like, I didn't say this, but I was thinking, you arrogant wanker. You know? You're not the only person giving up so much to this. <laughs> Back in London, and this time with no Stuart around, David squeezes in a final dress rehearsal for the big test tomorrow. David Keith, photographer, is still not happy with his pictures. Those pictures I took did not win the competition. I want to win the competition. I just don't want to be chosen as a fake, but I also want to win the competition. It's judgment day for David Keith, radiographer from Gloucester. Can he pass himself off as a fashion photographer? His final test takes place in a West London film studio where he's up against three professionals with their assistants, stylists, models, hairdressers and makeup artists. Meet the contestants. Jumping a bit. Ben Harris from Putney, West London. Four years as an assistant, now he's running his own team and making a name for himself in editorial and commercial work. James Lang, assisted for six years before going freelance to shoot for the avant-garde fashion market. Point at me, honey, point at me. Diane Patrice, six years in fashion photography, working for Elle, Cosmo and Mary Claire. And of course, there's David Keith, who until a month ago had never picked up a camera, fired a flash, or met a model in his life. <laughs> David will be trying to create the strongest image for a fashion glossy, judged by three experts from the industry. Ronald Dill Tower, Belgian-born international fashion photographer. Nick James, gallery curator at the Association of Fashion and Editorial Photographers. And Victoria Pierce, top photographer's agent. Hidden away in an observation room are David's mentors. They'll be watching and listening to every move on the studio floor. This is it. It's all on David's shoulders now. Can he pull it together when it really counts? A bit of tension there, isn't there? Yeah. And I want that desk out of the way, mate, so I can get back a little bit. I don't know if that's going to happen, mate. Eh? We'll make it happen. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> the judges are watching how the photographers handle the equipment and relate to the model. Point at me again. Point at me, honey. Point at me. Woo! No Very way for her. a faker would have yeah. been thought to use a camera that, that way. That way, no way. So she's, she's not going to get spotted, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So turn the sideways onto me a little bit now. Give me a slightly stuck in shape with your legs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The photographers have never met their models before, and David has to build a relationship with Nikki fast to get what he wants from her. Yeah, you're a little bit cheekier now. We like cheeky, expensive. I like skin. Tease us. Get him round here, I'm round here. <laughs> OK. Ben has the experience and confidence to live dangerously, okay. going for an ambitious okay. action One, shot. Two, three, go. They've given themselves quite a task here. Yeah, they are. Quite tricky. Yeah, it's really tricky, yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Very confident, though, isn't he? He knows he's going yeah. to get his shot. David's team has trained him well, but now he has to convince the judges that he's in command here. Same pose, just squint a little bit harder at me. Yes. Fantastic, we like that attitude. Second, Go. Come on, bless good. it, good. good, good, take control. James brings a quiet authority to the shoot. He seems to know exactly what he wants and how to get it. <laughs> hey, what? This guy's got mm. some nice lighting going on there, see? It's kept it really simple, but it's classy. <laughs> oh, I thought those guys were meant to go. Oh. There's a lot of excitement there, isn't there? It worries me that that might be just a little bit too much. Too much. <laughs> so many things could give the game away. Is David overacting? She is very hot. She's on fire. So it's just the temperature in this place. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's beautiful like that. Okay. Time's up. The shooting has to stop. Finish the row. Well done, it's a wrap, guys. Yeah. Woo. Thank you. Attention turns to the images. The competition pictures must be inspired as well as technically perfect. James, um, tell us about your background and how you got into photography. Um, well, I mean, basically from from school, I was interested. Then there's the interview, when the judges want to hear about the photographer's background, style and influences. First, James. Lots of things really, sort of Nan Golden work, I mean, really like her stuff. Um, and then later Wolfgang Tillman's, like, um, Jürgen Teller's fashion stuff is quite interesting. Each photographer must choose two images from six rolls of film. Diane. Because there's not really a bad picture of her. Um, and I didn't really want to cut because I'm still not sure. I didn't have a lot of time to choose. I'm not sure which one I kind of want to go in my book. The two images should be distinct but develop a theme. Ben. So a lot of, and in the second shot, which was the headshot, um, with the winds and she's wearing a, mm. a feather top. So you, you can, you get the movement without her moving, you know, so, it's a, so that was really the feel towards it. <laughs> David can spot fractures on an X-ray, but has he chosen his best fashion images? I have one criticism of that, but if it was slightly lower, because yeah. he would have made the legs look slightly taller mm. and a bit more dramatic, you know, because he's working on... Yeah, it's a little bit truncated there. Yeah. Right? He's made a mistake with one of the frames he's chosen. There's a hint of a light at the right-hand side, and the model's feet are slightly cropped. I've been assisting for freelance for about the past year and a half, two years. Um, before that, I was a studio assistant at the works at King's Cross. Oh, okay. Cross my fingers. Nick Knight's lighting on sort of the what campaign, Jen Sander campaign, yeah. um, early 90s. That was just fantastic. My lighting's very simple. It gives me a nice mood all the way down. Yeah. Um, it's sort of quite expensive, very sexy as well. Um, <laughs> really Isn't it good? Quiet, brilliant what a change, man. <laughs> I put them at their ease. I just chat with them. I treat them like a normal person. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to tell them how gorgeous they are because I'm getting so excited. Um, I, I, I like them to have a laugh. I hate when I'm... In fact, I don't think I've ever had a model leave my shoot at the end of the day going, hmm, they're always exciting. They're always trying to take some Polaroids away with them, you know? This is the best blag I've ever heard in my life. Which magazine would you most aspire to shoot for? Um, Vogue Italia. Right. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's where my expensive sort of, sort of style would fit in, I think, most. Yeah. What have we done to him, though? <laughs> He's got to go back and get a job as a brain surgeon. Yeah, we have croaked. You know, yeah. knee croaked. Now the judges consider their verdict. James, very beautiful lighting, very, very technical. Um, Diana. Of the four, I'd say she's the most commercial photographer. David, very strong, strong images, very strong style. He's very sure of his influences, his background, everything's, you can see 
how he's moved on from what he's seen before from others. They must choose a winner. Who took the best picture on the day? I think we all think that the one who achieved that is mm -hmm. Ben. Um, he, he managed to capture two quite different settings while keeping in the same atmosphere. David didn't win the competition, but how did he do in the real test? Did the judges spot him as the faker? I want to tell you that one of them is in fact an imposter who's only been handling a camera and shooting photographs for just under a month. And I wonder if you, you'd like to tell me who you think that who you imposter think? might be. Ah, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Um, I personally think, um, because the way he was handling the equipment, it could have been James. James, just purely of the four photographers, he seemed the least confident with handling the actual camera itself. I'm not thinking about it. Maybe Diana. Maybe James. He was much quieter and much more concentrated on making sure he was doing everything right. Probably the one with this is David. <laughs> I don't think so, no. It seems like he knew what he was doing. Shall I tell you who it was? Yes, please. David. Really? God, very surprised. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he looks... He looks to part, though. Because his, his results were very accomplished. And he was our second, he would have been our second choice. Oh, we were having difficulty de deciding between him and Ben. He, he'd been taught really well. <laughs> David doesn't know the results. It's time for him to meet his mentors. How are you doing? Anticipating, waiting. Yeah. You feeling good? Uh, I'm not sure. I feel really nervous. I don't want to know whether I let you yeah, guys stand Yeah, of course, yeah. Well... None of the judges thought you were the best photographer there. And, you know, I think that's a pretty fair result. But uh, I guess the good news is that not one of the judges uh, spotted you with a fake. Yeah! Yeah! I say, listen, I've pushed you so hard, I'm amazed you didn't have a nervous break. <laughs> I have bullied you and bullied you and bullied you, but listen, it's paid off, mate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well done, well done. You did, you did fantastic, mate. You did fantastic. I'm not a clone anymore. I can be an individual, and that's something, the confidence that Sally Vet. Claire Stewart have all given me. Got that confidence and self assurity that I didn't have before. I could walk into a pub with a Hoxton fin on in the middle of Gloucester and actually not give a damn about what anyone thinks. When I first met David, I thought, ah, this is going to be a challenge. And it, and it was. But he pulled everything together right at the, at really, at the exact right time. And, and that, that really showed in the end result. Hello. Wow. Good. Well done, relax. Alright. 